He's not the only one. That's what I hear. Anyway, Seth got his house and land, and he borrowed heavily against them by a big lumber mill near Dothan, Alabama. I was working there, buying timber. That's how I came to know Seth. He got it cheap. Good timing. This was late 1979. The price of plywood spiked, and we were doing pretty well. We had a good hurricane season. Lots of damage. Lots of demand for plywood and lumber. We borrowed against the mill and bought a furniture factory near Albany, Georgia. The place made these oversized rocking chairs you see on the front porches of griddle restaurants coast to coast. Seth negotiated a contract with the chain and overnight they couldn't make the rocking chairs fast enough. He pledged the stock, borrowed some more, and bought another furniture factory near Troy, Alabama. About that time, he found a banker in Birmingham who was trying to grow his small bank into something much bigger, and he was aggressive. He and Seth were on the same page, and the deals came one after the other. More factories, more lumber mills, more timber leases. Seth had a nose for sniffing out businesses that were undervalued or in trouble, and his banker rarely said no. I warned him against so much debt, but he was too reckless to listen. He had something to prove. He bought an airplane, kept it in Tupelo so no one around here would know stayed in the air. Does this have a happy ending? Oh, yes. Over the past ten years or so, Seth bought about three dozen companies, primarily furniture plants in the South, some which he moved to Mexico, but also lumber yards and sawmills, along with thousands of acres of timber, all with borrowed money. I mentioned one banker in Birmingham, but there were others. The bigger he got, the easier it became to borrow more. As I said, it was at times frightening, but the guy had never got burned. He didn't sell a single thing he bought, just held on, looking for the next deal. Deals and debts were like an addiction to sell. Some men gamble, some drink, some chase women. Seth loved the smell of somebody else's money as he bought another company. He also liked women. Then, sadly, he got sick. It was about a year ago when the doctors told him he had lung cancer. He was ripping along at full speed until he went to the doctor. They told him he had a year max. Needless to say, he was devastated. Without consulting anyone, he decided to sell out. A few years ago, we found the Rush Law Firm in Tupelo, and Seth finally had some guys he could trust. Fired him as fast as he hired him. But the Rush firm convinced him to consolidate everything into one holding company. Last November, he sold the holding company to a leveraged buyout group in Atlanta for $55 million. He happily repaid his debts to the tune of about $35 million. He netted $20? He netted $20. In time. There were a few other loose ends, including some stock in the holding company, so I walked away in good shape. I retired at the end of last year. I don't know what Seth has done with the money since then. 